Hello and welcome to another edition of Door County Today. I'm your host, Paul Renier of Door County Nature and Travel. April is here, the month of nature's rebirth after a long winter. Join us as we visit with Pat Thorpe, Door County's own certified organic vegetable gardener. Pat's Patch supplies organic produce throughout the peninsula. Thinking about making plans to visit Door County? If so, you'll be interested in our segment about classic inns and resorts, a group of historic lodgings that offer some of the county's most beloved accommodations. We'll also go to Doorways, Door Shakespeare's summer theater camp for kids. It's not too early to be making plans for giving your kids a great Door County experience this summer. So let's start this month's show with a visit to Pat's Patch. I'm Pat Thorpe, and I have an organic produce business called Pat's Patch. So in 93, I had my first garden. I had all this extra produce, and I started giving it to a friend of mine who was a vegetarian. She asked me at the end of the season, could I please grow produce just for her? So that's what I did. I wound up running into a woman at the corner store in Bailey's Harbor, and she said, Pat, I know you're organic, so would you consider possibly selling some of your produce here? So I started selling to her. It just blossomed, and I started selling to a restaurant, and then I started selling to the restaurant I worked at. And then my um, brother-in-law brought over uh, one winter a soil map of Door County. And I discovered there was a line running right through my property. On one side, it was rock, clay, and on the other side, it was, it was a, a, a beautiful loam. So the next spring, I went in the back and took a shovel full of dirt, and I just went, my comment was, oh my God, I can grow carrots. And so then we started opening up the back, and I, I have three different fields back there that are a half an acre each. The reason the cost is, is more for organic food is because there is so much more labor involved. I do everything by hand. We do use the tractor in the spring and throughout the season for turning under a crop so that I can plant a green manure crop to enrich the soil. First of all, if you do over $5,000 with a business, you have to be certified. If you do under $5,000, you can say you're organic and not be certified. Every year I fill out an application, every single year, and it takes me a couple months to do that. I need to buy all organic seed, tell them exactly where I'm going to plant that organic seed, approximately when my harvest date will be, and approximately how much I anticipate harvesting. And they come out once a year and they inspect, and they are gonna make sure that everything I said I had planted, when and where is where it is, and that I have weeds growing so that they can see I don't use chemicals. I need to keep a harvest log, which they do take a look at, and I have everything listed here that I harvest. Salad, I harvested 15 pounds and 11.3, then 18.7. Cipollini onions down every single product that I grow. I have to state how much I harvested. And then they're always really happy with me that since I do farmer markets, that I have a real accurate record of the product I took to the market, how much I took, how much I sold for each, each market that we do. In the past, it was difficult to get a hold of organic seed, but now the business is really expanding and more and more seed companies are offering organic seed and there are quite a few that are just certified organic seed. So I use a, about seven different catalogs that I get my seed from. This is some salad I just picked this morning and we're gonna put it in its first rinse, cold water going in. So it's gonna take the heat out from the field, the dirt, and hopefully any bugs that are in there will sink down to the bottom. Now to this I have to add some sorrel yet, some leaf fennel, and um, some edible flowers. I spin it 13 times exactly. 13 is my lucky number. And then it goes into a fresh clean plastic bag, and then I bring it over to my salad cooler. I have a special salad cooler. and it goes right into here. Well, the whole idea is to harvest it and sell it as fast as you can. Right here, what we're looking at is a high tunnel. By having a structure like this, the idea is to extend your growing season earlier in the ground, means you'll be first at the market to have items that people aren't getting till July or late June. 
It will extend it to where we can grow longer. It also cuts down on disease, which will make a difference. So we hope that we should be able to have product all year round. And if not, we'll be able to extend the seasons quite a bit. Somebody told us, you know, there's grant money out there. So we applied for it. We uh, placed a proposal for what you see behind us. And I had made some changes because I wanted to build it kind of green. And so we, we made uh, a lot of improvements. Where the poles been across in gables here to attach everything the way we wanted to so we got permanent sides. We used some recycled material. We started with that. Uh, the door on the place, we uh, found that at Menards going out of business for $50. We have uh, the 2x12s that's making the bend. They're irregular shapes. So that was uh, con concrete forms from an old job. The kit had plastic sides that came over with zippers in it to where we said, no, that's not going to work up here due to the high winds and being up here on a hill. That's why we went with the solid ends, which give it also better insulation in our value. At the present time, I sell to grocery stores, Piggly Wiggly and Greens and Grains. I go to farmer's markets, and now that has just really expanded. We do five markets a week now. Organic to me means that I believe in the future. I believe in leaving this land better for my granddaughter than it was when I started. Classic Inns and Resorts of Door County was something that we as a group uh, throughout the county started about, I suppose it's been 15 years ago now, and there's six of us that are involved in this. My wife Bonnie and I started White Lace Inn in 1982. What we have here is because we have 18 rooms that are spread out over four houses, which are ostensibly right next door to each other though, as we have a central backyard with a gazebo, lots of gardens and that sort of thing, and a pathway. We have 18 rooms, but there are four rooms, six rooms, four rooms, and four rooms. A lot of times folks hardly realize anyone else is here. And we have a wonderful, very quiet backyard. Folks can come and, and uh, we really do get some folks who come and spend a lot of their time just parking themselves in the backyard in a uh, Adirondack chair or a bench back there or in the gazebo reading a book. Our rooms are not very basic. They're, they're pretty upper end although some of the garden house rooms are pretty simple bathrooms, but most of our rooms are, are not exactly what you'd call simple or basic rooms. The main building was built in 1907 by Dr. Sebald Fickner. It was one of the first buildings in Sister Bay. We're located on 27 wooded acres and we have 1,100 feet of shoreline on the waters of Green Bay. It became more of the resort type property as we know it in the 1980s, which includes 46 rooms and suites, outdoor swimming pool, outdoor whirlpool. We have a dock down at the water's edge, tennis, lots of activities for our guests to enjoy while they are here on property. We have lots of discriminating dogs who bring their owners and stay with us. We have designated dog-friendly rooms and with the nature trails and shoreline, there's lots of property that you can enjoy with your dog. The Country House caters primarily to um, an adult clientele. It does provide a very unique atmosphere, a much more quiet, relaxed type atmosphere. Two of our buildings are on the National Register of Historic Places, namely the Zahn House, which is the original inn and goes back to 1904 when August Zahn arrived from Germany. He was a young blacksmith. The walls are made of uh, stacked stovewood mortared into place with, with lime mortar. What that does is it provides a really unique ambiance. It's the end grain of all these stacked logs exposed on the interior of each room. In 1994, a gentleman from Milwaukee bought the place kind of on a whim. He visualized it as a bed and breakfast and he started rehabbing the building toward that purpose and was added about two years when we came along. And uh, my wife Joan and I have been the innkeepers here since 1996. We have 400 feet of uh, waterfront here on the harbor. It's a lovely setting. A lot of our guests, especially in the summertime, of course, take advantage of that. This property was originally the Harbor Lights Motel. It was a 12-unit uh, roadside motel 
located on the north end of Ake Harbor. In 1990, my best friend, Jerry Plore, bought the Harbor Lights Motel and uh, reconfigured it into the Ashbrook and the beautiful hotel it is today. The Ashbrook is a 36 room boutique slash lifestyle hotel. We cater to adults and then young adults, 16 years of age and older. So we've got an indoor pool, whirlpool, there's a fitness room and sauna. Many of our rooms and suites have fireplaces and in, in room two person whirlpools. The gazebo on the property, it's been used extensively by our guests as a, as a wonderful place to go sit in the afternoon and uh, enjoy a glass of wine or or just read a book or whatever. We have many, many wonderful return guests that come once, twice, even up to four times a year. We're open uh, seasonally from the beginning of May through the end of October, and then uh, we're open for the New Year's holiday. It had been the doctor's office for 40 years. In 1906, it was on this property, as well as Wilson's. And uh, before that, it was in the park. It was a, an office in the park. Uh, so it's an old historical building. We added on to it, kept the same feeling throughout all, and we have 16 guest rooms. It's a real Door County feeling. The inn is right in the center of, of Ephraim, and uh, Ephraim is a popular place because it's so pretty. The buildings are all white. It's built into a series of bluffs. The inn is on the first level of Ephraim, and you know the water is so close. They will sit in our com common room. It's very quiet. Uh, they'll sit by the fireplace and read and they're in the center of the village, yet it's just uh, the privacy within the building is, is just kind of surprising and very, very nice. The fireplace matches the shutters. The, the details in the rooms um, match the, the feeling of the room. And it, it's not, what, a lot of people don't notice it, but you end up just feeling very comfortable. The people who were coming here really were liking the white gull as it was. Now that didn't mean they wanted it ramshackle or run down, but they didn't want it remodeled to the point where it didn't, it was just an old building with new rooms in it. So that's kind of how we began to realize the value. We have to not change what people have come to expect from us, but we also have to be aware of, of changes and trends. And so it's a, it's a pretty stimulating and challenging uh, business. Just meeting the people here makes it fun to come to work every day. We never feel like there's any hardship in coming to work or dealing with customers. It's a delight to go to a place where people come in the door in pretty good spirits. They're on vacation. When you, when you start chatting with people, it's always a pleasant experience. I think one of the things that can really help uh, set a classic in apart is their service. Uh, obviously they're going to have, a, for the most part, I think a, a historic property, uh, a historic level to some extent for their property, but it's the service that I think they offer that, that some may consider classic. Uh, that warm smile when they check in, uh, amenities that go above and beyond. I think those are the sorts of, of things that, that I see setting a, you know, a, a classic in apart from, from its competition. Georgia Captain, and we are at 3186 May Road in Southern Door, which is an old um, renovated one-room school. The first thing I did to make this place energy efficient was to get an energy audit. It's about $300, but I think you get you can get a, a partial rebate for that. And then there are all these focus on energy rewards, so you you know you get part of what you put in back and you get more of it back in reducing your energy bills and your house gets more comfortable. I have a photovoltaic array on the roof and big panels that cover almost the whole south side of the roof. They collect uh, the rays of the sun and turn them into electricity and there's a gadget in the basement called a converter which converts whatever gets collected into electricity which can be fed into the power lines and sold to Wisconsin Public Service. I would say six months out of the year, I'm ahead of the game. In the June and July, when the days are really long and we have a lot of sunshine, I, you know, I'm making elec enough electricity so I get checks instead of bills from the power company. My understanding is that the power companies have a mandate to uh, have sustainable energy sources like wind, like wind and photovoltaics, a certain amount by a certain time. 
and they can take credit for what I have on my roof if they buy it from me and um, they buy it from me at a premium price for, for guaranteed for 10 years. So I'm a supplier, yeah. Yeah, I'm a power company. One of the main recommendations was to do something about the huge windows, the south-facing windows, because they collect lots and lots of heat. The, the main room, what used to be the classroom of the schoolhouse, uh, gets a lot of heat on a sunny winter day. The minute the sun goes down, all that heat starts going back out those windows because there's not a lot of our value, and especially this is a windy place. He said if you could figure out a way to keep that heat in, you could practically be neutral. So I researched um, window quilts and I found this company online called Warm Window and they, they sell an insulating material which is a four layered little sandwich. It's got a layer of mylar and a couple of la a layer of insulation on either side of the mylar and then you put some sort of facing on it so it looks decent inside your house. Once they're closed, they sit there all night. In the morning, if you put your hand between the drapery and the window, it's like putting your hand outside. And the inside of the drapery is warm. So I know it's working. Well, the garden just is, is kind of a, a work in progress. It's evolving. The plants really don't like the well water very much. And it is nice to be able to water with rainwater and not waste it and put in some footings. And my roommate built a frame and I had somebody come and put a spigot on this 300 gallon stock tank. and. It's up high enough, so I think it's going to work to, to gravity feed uh, an irrigation system that I'm trying out this summer. I've um, always been kind of a Ruth Stout No Work Garden book. She was an old lady who wrote a book about how to garden without working. Which, but she uses a lot of straw <laughs> uh, for, for mulch. And, you know, so I'm combining her methods with some other methods that I've been reading about lately with using raised beds and and you know I've always been interested in companion planting and as but I just had this idea that it would be fun to be able to reach out my bedroom window and pick something fresh to eat uh, in the middle of winter so the first thing I did was build raised beds it turned out to be a really good place to grow tomatoes because the heat re reflecting off the concrete foundation was, you know, the tomatoes really like, they like lots of heat. Okay, this is a good place that gets lots of sun, gets lots of heat. I'll bet you if I were to cover that over, I could even collect some of that heat and maybe let it into the house in the wintertime, which I'm doing. Yeah, you just open the window and let the heat in. I think, one, you know, one of the reasons of, for putting the array on the roof was not necessarily to get rich by selling electricity to the power company, but this is a, a pretty visible building, and it's um, renewable energy is, is really an important value for me. And um, so it was, it was a way of saying, look what you can do. Doorways is a four-day long camp. We meet Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 10 a.m. till 12.30. And we are creating original theater by using story theater techniques and also by using Shakespearean text and, and verse. What I want the kids to get out of it is I want them first and foremost to have fun. You know, and kind of, it's almost sort of tricking them into acting, you know, and by, by acting out stories and by I think doing things that come very naturally to, to, to kids, you know, taking on characters and taking on roles and, and understanding emotions and developing relationships that before they know it, they're, they're acting. I mean, I have kids who are really shy. I think maybe their, their parents bring them here in hopes that they'll kind of get out of their shell a little bit. And, and you know, we do a lot of group work and I try to be really sensitive to those kids who this might be their first experience or they might be a little afraid to talk on their own or a little just shy to be up in front of people. So we really try to foster a group environment where they feel really safe and where they feel like they're part of a team and that they're part of something and it's just not them out to see. A lot of those games, they do kind of masquerade as, as learning tools, like the, the Here We Come game. You know, they're, they're having to act things out and make the invisible visible and be sensitive 
sensitive to space. And the Wax Museum game is, is really about the awareness of their bodies and being still and listening, you know, and, and being sharp and moving and making very uh, clear choices. But more than anything, these games are about connection. It creates a sort of a sense of unity and solidarity amongst them. And so it's, it's the exploration, it's the creation, um, but more than anything, I think it's, it's the community building. Teamwork and collaboration is something that I, I would love to have them walk away with this too, that it's not, it's not everyone doing their own thing and then hoping that it all works. It's really that they depend on each other and that the ensemble is, is really the most important thing and listening to each other and that there's a moment for them, there's a moment to give and take and that's what a lot of those games try to cultivate is just a sense of ensemble and then also just to have fun. They're doing a lot of great things here. I think exposing kids to language and text and and action and, and being intentional with your words is something that I don't think people need to wait till they're they're in their teens or in college to learn that because I think we're losing a lot of communication skills with technology with iPhones and iPods and we don't listen to one another anymore we don't really talk to one another and I think giving kids the opportunity to do that, to speak to each other and, and listen, uh, I think is important. So the tools that it takes to succeed at those games and play those games are the tools that they will be using when they're on stage. I think the kids really get the opportunity to be a part of something special. When they think of Shakespeare, they think of something as big and impossible and, and very noble. And when they dive into it, they're like, wow, this is great language that I actually understand. And they, I think they, they feel a sense of something different than if they've ever done theater before. There's, there's an excitement that comes. There's this sort of giddiness to the, the students. And they loved playing games, but they couldn't, they couldn't wait to get to doing the scene work. They just wanted to rehearse. They wanted to inhabit these worlds and these characters that have always seemed so distant and far away and something that someone has probably told them, oh, when you get older, you can try it, or you're too young to understand it, but they, they love it. I have a lot of grandparents who, who are local and then their grandkids are up for the summer and this is like something fun that they can do while they're up here. Some are local and then some, like I said, they're, they're, they plan their vacation around being able to do doorways and you know they know that they're going to be in Door County for a week in the summer and they picked this particular week to come up so that they can take doorways. For me it's great to be around them because as we get older our imagination starts to fade and dwindle and as actors and, and actors who've been trained um, with workshops and school and conservatories I think sometimes we lose that childlike wonder with imagination. We lose just playing, which is theater. And we, we get so wrapped up in technique and voice, we slowly bury that childlike imagination. So to be around it is refreshing and, and uh, recharges something that gets lost in, in the humdrum of life. It's very important for students and for kids especially to have ownership over their stories and their experiences. And that's a huge triumph for me that I have seven-year-olds who really are so excited to do Shakespearean text and play Shakespearean roles and say the words and they don't want to paraphrase and, and I'm really excited about that, that I can um, give them some tools and then give them the text and then just have them go to town and create something that, again, that they still have some ownership over it because a lot of the ideas and a lot of the feelings and a lot of the, the thoughts, when they paraphrase them, they come from their experiences and, and how they would talk, but then they're able to put that into the text and create some really real moments and that's very exciting. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to come back often to find out more about Door County's history, landscapes, businesses, and people. For updated information about this beautiful peninsula, visit doorcountytoday.com. I'm Paul Renier with Door County Today. See you next time.